Hello everybody, it's me again. I was very fortunate to be able to get my hands on a Jetson AGX Orin developer kit. And uh, so we're going to kind of go through that today. But before we do that, I would like to uh, uh, thank NVIDIA for allowing me to be part of their vision for the era of AI. And I think this small clip, uh, following clip, kind of describes how I feel at the moment. And third crew member of the historic man mission to Mars, astronaut Fred Randall. <laughs> All right, so let's get down to business. <clears throat> okay, let's uh, open her up and see what we got. Scoot it forward a little bit here. It's a nice box. Um, uh, the first thing we see is we see the Orin module. And there's another box inside. Go ahead and pull that out. Take this away. So we have the module itself right here. So in this box we have the power supply and some cables and instructions. So this is what comes with the kit. You get the module itself, get the power supply, uh, cable, connect cable the, the cord for the power supply, and you get this USB. Looks like a C cable. Here's a closer look at the power supply. For a size comparison, here's an Xavier NX, and it has a relay stack on it. That's why it looks a little bit bigger than it usually does. So it gives you a general idea of the size of it. Have you noticed the fan is much, much, much bigger? Okay, so uh, let's look at uh, what it offers. First of all, you have a USB Type-C connector, the 40-pin expansion header, and then you have the two USB 3.2 hub uh, connectors right here. You have the power button, the force recovery button, and then the reset button. And then you have a micro SD slot right here. And then there's a USB type C connection right there, the DC power. Ethernet connection, USB 3.2 connections, and a display port. And then right here, you have a micro USB 2.0. And I thought this was pretty clever. Behind this little door here, it's held on by magnets. You have the PCIe header, PCIe connector right there. Then you also in here you have your two Wi-Fi antennas. Oop. As you notice there's a magnet. And in here you have your two Wi-Fi antennas in there. And like I say, and then the PCIe connector right here. And this is clever. This just like snaps back into place. Bam! So that's kind of neat. 
And then that's about it here. And then uh, let's go underneath. Take a look underneath. Okay, and so here's a under, and then here's a shot from underneath. Have you noticed that there's there's two M two connect key connections here? There's one. This one's being taken up by the Wi-Fi. There's another one up here you can use for storage. It has two slots for the CSI cameras right here. And down here it has a, a, a pin header that's for audio. And then uh, other than that, it looks pretty nice down there. Nice and clean. So that's pretty much so that's pretty much it. That kind of shows everything that comes with the uh, uh, developer kit. And uh, I get a little run through of all the components that, that we can see. So so let's go ahead and fire her up and see what she can do. So we started up the AGX Orin, and so let's go ahead and look around in there and see what we got. So first of all, we're running Ubuntu 20.04, um, the disk capacity is 63.7, a memory 29.9. Um, we're running Jetpack 5, and uh, as you can see right here. Now let's see what else we got. Oh, and then just like this is your typical a uh, Jetpack installation where you have the Jetson forums, Jetson Zoo, Developer Zone, Community Projects. And then it also comes with uh, Jetpack 5, comes with a CUDA 11.4, CUDNN 8.3.2, Tensor RT 8.4.0, OpenCV 4.5.4, Vulkan 1.3, VPI 2.0, Insight Systems 2021.5 and Insight Graphics 2021.5. Now, uh, since it's your typical uh, Jetpack installation, it comes with your standard Tensor RT samples, CUDA DNN samples, CUDA samples, MM API samples, and VPI samples. Now, uh, up here, uh, this you can set the power mode from up here go up to the right and I've got it set on max it's a 15 watt 30 watt and 50 watt so what we're gonna do now is it comes with some examples there is a uh, running inference example on some vision model benchmarking and then there's a uh, a deep stream sample and then there's a sample on Riva which is a, a voice recognition application so let's go ahead and start with uh, run the uh, vision model benchmarking and then we'll see just what this baby can do so we'll go ahead and start here by the way what I've done is I've downloaded all this and in this folder called review there's the application benchmark, Riva, TAO, PTM. So let's go ahead and run the launch the vision benchmark. Now this takes about like five minutes to run. So what we do is uh, I, we'll, we'll go look at something else and I might pause it. Um, so it takes a while. See, it, it says running all benchmarks. This will take two hours. It does it. It takes probably like five minutes. So while we're doing that, let's look at this. So as you've probably seen before, the you've seen this before on the left, the Jetson AGX Xavier and the Jetson AGX Orin comparison. Well, um, I'm more familiar with the, the Jetson Nano and the Xavier NX. So I brought that up here and we'll compare those addition to additionally the Jetson AGX Xavier. As you can see, the AGX Orange has 275 tops. 21 tops for the NX, 248 cores for the Orin, 348 for the NX. There's the Amper GPU for the Orin, uh, the Volta GPU for the Xavier, and there's also the Volta Architect for the NX. Um, you have a uh, two times NV two DL accelerators, a Vision accelerators. Same over here. And then we have right here is your accelerators, and then we have the CPU, 
6 core NVIDIA Caramels for the NX, 12 core NVIDIA ARM Cortex for the Orin, and 8 core for the Caramel for the Xavier. Um, for the storage, uh, Xavier has 32 gigabytes, 64 for the Orin, and uh, 16 for the NX. You have your video encoders, same thing over here. You have the CSI cameras, up to six cameras. Same thing here. 16 lanes MIPI CI2. You have a PCI Express over here. And over here, you just have a PCIe. Same thing, I'd assume. They both have Ethernet. And then uh, the power here 10 watts to 30 watts, 15 watts to 60 watts. And then uh, that's about it. Over on the display over here, you get two multi mode DPI. You get a, a display port and the HDMI. On the Orin, you just get the display port. So while this is running, we'll go ahead and pause it. And then I'll bring it back up once it's done. Well, as you can see, our vision benchmarking is done, and we got some crazy numbers here. So, like people net 526 frames per second, dash cam net 1895 frames per second. So this this looks pretty impressive. I can't wait to uh, put the screws to this uh, the AGX Orin and see what she'll do. So for the next thing we're going to do, we're going to run a Jupiter Lab, and there's two Jupiter notebooks in here. One's for Tau and one's for DeepStream. So as you see here, we have uh, the pre-trained model, and we have the train and adapt, train and optimize uh, Jupyter Notebook, and the people, people net model using DeepStream Jupyter Notebook. Now, <clears throat> I'm not going to do the Tau one this time, because I want to, this is, we're going to train it up on the cloud, and then uh, we're going to deploy it onto the, uh, AGX Orin, so I'm going to kind of devote a whole a video just to that alone. But what we can do now is we can run the PeopleNet workflow uh, Jupyter Notebook. So the first thing it does is a uh, little model overview, talks about PeopleNet, the model architect, uh, you know, Technic V2, ResNet 34, talks about the training, using the Tau toolkit to train uh, algorithms. To optimize the network and then the performance there's some performance results right here and so let's go ahead and get this going here so let's uh, go get the models and they'll be in here pre-trained model so once it gets those what it'll do is to put them in a build a directory called model and load them in there. You see right here. It's got the labels, the ETLT folder, and the text file. And then what we'll do is they'll run it. So what happens if you go back here? Uh, we're going to run this one. This DeepStream app source people net tiled text. And if you are used to uh, the DeepStream, this is uh, generally the text file. You guys should be all used to how this works. So this is how you set up your, your pipeline and stuff and where, where to go find uh, your engine or to build your engine. So what it's going to do is this is going to take all this build the engine and then run the inference on and the engine should sh show up in there so let's go ahead and run this I might pause it depending on how long it takes to build the engine 
So it's uh, uh, it, it built the, the engine like right there, and it's running the model. So it's detecting people and faces, and that's a it's a pretty nice picture right there. So let's go ahead and see how fast we're going. So we go down here, right here. Running 29 frames a second. We're running uh, six streams. So we're running six streams. One, two, three, four, five, six. About 30 frames a second. So that's pretty good. So that that that's pretty nice. So anyway, so we'll stop this. We'll pause it, and then we'll quit. And the next one we're going to do is we're going to run uh, the same thing, but we're going to run it on the USB camera. So right down here, it's basically going to take the same thing, but just use the USB camera. As you can see, there's me. Uh, the face. And then there's the Orin right there. My little test bed. And then we'll see how that's running. Uh, it's running 14, 15 frames a second. I noticed that even though it says this, that the, that the, the frame rate is much faster. In fact, if you go back to here and I bring it up here. I mean, it's a pretty fast frame rate, but I'll, it always says it runs like 15, but that's pretty fast. There's me, me talking in my headset. All right. So you guys get the idea how it works. Uh, I, I kind of like this setup to run the deep stream out of a Jupyter Notebook. Uh, that's pretty neat because the Jupyter Notebooks are good for learning. So that's this one. And the final example is we're going to use the Riva which is the, the voice recognition uh, application. So we'll go ahead and close this. Hello? Hey, as you can see, it's recording what I'm saying. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Uh, let's see, uh, the rain in Spain falls mainly on the plain. That's pretty accurate and fairly quick. How about how much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Mm, good. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, L. <laughs> pretty good. Anyway, so this is the, the demo. This is a Riva demo, and this is pretty cool. I can't wait to kind of break this down and figure out how to make it like run things like turn on lights make things go left and right up and down so this is pretty cool so I'm gonna leave you guys with this um, like I say I'm gonna have a follow-up demo uh, that shows the uh, towel toolkit uh, being trained on the web and then being run on the Orin so uh, thank you very much, and uh, uh, I can't wait for you guys to get your own uh, AGX Orange. because I'm, I'm dying to see what you guys are going to do with them. They have a lot of potential for fun and business. All right, thank you. Bye. By the way, here's, uh, speaking of that, this, here's more results. You know, here's the, here's the transcript and the words. So pretty good. This is going to be an interesting one to play with. All right, bye. For reals.